Hey everyone, welcome to my modern off-grid cabin. In this video, I'll explain my power system, my water setup, and my propane system so that if you're interested in setting up a similar home or cabin off-grid, you can understand how to get started, how things kind of work, what to expect, the realities of it, and know that with technology these days, you can be set up pretty good and comfortably for not a ton of money as well. You don't have to be living off of oil lamps and taking cold showers anymore. All right, so let's dive into it. These are my two solar panels. I mean, we're pretty much charging at 700 watts right now. And that's getting me to 100% with the sunshine like this. Uh, we're, actually, we're actually producing extra power so i mean if i had more water i could run the laundry machine and a bunch of stuff like that i have one more panel that will max me out on my solar charger which is rated up to 150 volts um adding one more panel in will put me just underneath that and we'll don't need that right now with all this sunshine so We'll set that up in the fall, I think, or towards the end of summer so that I can try to maximize my uh, solar on the cloudy days and stuff like that. There's our beautiful inverter charging right now, coming in from the solar panels and charging into our batteries, put, pumping in that sweet juice. This guy runs at about, I think, I think his inverter consumes about 10, 12 watts, just when it's on but the sweet thing about this setup is when you turn off the inverter system uh, it'll still pump juice through if the solar panels are are getting sun into the batteries so so yeah then we've got our batteries here this is a 4.8 kilowatt system you can go down to 20% so 80% usable power. Yeah, this is our 3000 watt generator. Basically, you know, about an hour, hour and a half every day, fire it up and charge things back up to 100%. And it gets me by for the winter months. Yeah, then that's our water pump. It basically has a pressure switch in it. So pressurizes this tank on the left and the lines and then you know, when you open a faucet, pressure drops, it kicks on. This basically consumes about 270 watts while it's running. And I have enough pressure to run through the hot water tank and everything. Um, I can shoot a stream pretty far from my hose if I want. And the only other power here would be that orange heat trace line. Uh, during the winter when it gets freezing, you know, we, I run that. 10, 12 watts when that's uh, heating, but it has a thermostat built in. So when it doesn't need to be heating, it shuts off. Turning on and off over a 24 hour period uh, really doesn't consume that much power. So if you're somewhere freezing and you need to run heat trace, uh, you don't need to worry about that off grid. Basically the coffee maker, uh, that consumes 900 watts when it's running. So this thing's pretty beefy. That's why you try to not use anything off grid that uh, has to convert electricity to heat because it's very inefficient. But you know, I have a jet boil here. I kind of do some camp coffee sometimes, but I, I might get one for the propane stove so I can use one of those uh, coffee little boilers on the propane stove, which would be a little better, but you know, this works okay. It's not that much power, you know, maybe it consumes like a percent uh, of my power or something a day. So it's pretty minimal and it's nice and easy. So, you know, got to have some luxuries here and there. Yeah, if you need some hot water really quick, I'd recommend getting a jet boil. I use these all the time when I'm camping. You want some hot water really quick. You know, sometimes a, say a minute or two and you've got boiled water and you're good to go. Mini fridge, not too crazy. This one, I think it's rated at one amp. 
and it actually doesn't run all the time so it's maybe like 120 watts running but I mean it kicks on for five minutes and then it's off for 15 minutes and then kicks on for five minutes to cool so I mean it's um, not using a lot of power all the time it's just sitting on standby I could pretty much go a couple days on my battery system powering this before I would kind of need to charge maybe three days just because I like to keep stuff topped up and not really be getting down really low. So when the washing machine is pumping water in, looks like 168 watts. And when it's agitating, it's uh, 830 watts. Dryer consumes about 450 watts when it's tumbling, but also worth it when you have clean, fresh laundry. I mean, it was pretty funny when I first got this machine out here, I was testing it and I actually just ran it off the generator, a 12 volt pump hooked up to the truck battery and a water tank outside. Got it going and... Yeah, then my TV, basically, I think this runs at like 80 watts. I actually got a fairly small one just because I was trying to really limit the power. But, you know, I love myself a little TV. You gotta watch the YouTube, right? You're watching TV, so you know, you just gotta calculate how many hours you wanna watch TV and make sure you have enough power to run it. Yeah, that's my little internet router uh cellular this thing just runs at 12 watts doesn't consume much power at all and works pretty good it's enough to stream stuff uh you know do whatever you need to do you could go on some zoom calls if you want everything's wired in got all our outlets we can plug in all my devices and stuff like that and i mean you know charging your laptop phones i mean that stuff's pretty minimal i wouldn't worry too much about phone charging and devices and stuff like that. Yeah, lights, I mean, those can, you know, get LED light bulbs and those consume six or eight watt bulb or something. So this is our electrical panel. We have our 120 volt wire coming in from the inverter up top. And since it's only 120, we jump it over with the red wire so that we can have power on both sides of our panel. Otherwise, you would only have one side you could work with. An upgrade to this would be getting a 240-volt inverter. And then you can actually run 240 volts to stuff, like a 240-volt well pump if you need. Yeah, so we collect our rainwater off the gutters through the downspouts here. Take them into this little filter I built, which is just some aluminum screen. That goes down into one and a half inch pipe, which has another little bit of screen here. That comes down into our first flush diverter, which has a little threaded plug, so we can drain that out if we need, uh, pretty much after each rainfall. Added a little breather tube here because we were getting airlock issues. Uh, just keep drilling holes and putting those in until you solve that if you run into that. Then we've got our pipe coming down. Then that top pipe comes down into some two inch PVC. Basically just teed this off as you can see here to the top tank. Have another T down here in a little box Let's see if you can focus there it is a bunch of reducers down to a three quarter inch pex so that comes over here that comes over here into our pump box right there feeds right into our black pump there and that comes over to this little pressure tank and some more 90s and then this comes out 
Under there, I just have a shut off a valve. Yeah, here's inside that box. Just got a little pressure treated box down here to keep it from freezing. We got our shut off valve. That goes straight into our culvert, which goes up into the house. So yeah, now we're inside. We're right above that culvert. So that just connects up underneath the floor. And then I have a two inch pipe coming all the way from underground up to this level. And then I have this white three quarter inch PEX line coming through that just so I could shove some heat trace down there. I was hoping a bit of interior wood heat would kind of keep that line from freezing too. And uh, that just comes up to my future filtration area. And then that just comes over to this spaghetti of PEX piping that just tees off to my hot water tank. And then you got your hot water coming out. Then those all tee off till the, you know, faucets, bat shower, and the washing machine. And we got our nice little tiles up shower and bathtub and, you know, I mean, I'm in water. Here we have our two propane tanks running into a dual tank system. Or when one tank is empty, that valve will switch over automatically to the next tank to keep your propane going. Then you just fill one tank up at a time. Then here we have our propane line coming out of that valve into our half inch black iron pipe, which just tees off and goes up into all of our appliances. And that's just set up for the maximum amount of BTUs that all of our appliances total would need. Yeah, so there's one of our propane lines coming inside and then we just connect that up to the back of our propane dryer. There, I'll see if we can show you it firing up. The jet engine propane dryer. good you know dries clothes in about 30 40 minutes so for this uh, KitchenAid range basically similar situation to the propane dryer this was a natural gas appliance I got it used and then bought the I think it was Whirlpool again I, I got the parts ordered in which uh, just has all the orifice nuts you just got to get into everything um, all from the top you just pull this whole top plate off all these little uh, things they're all just there's just like a nut there a nut there not under there you know you can get in there with a driver and just pull those out pop the new ones in and then hook it up at the back just to the propane line just like you normally would and then I just you know I fire one of these up and just use the, uh, the barbecue lighter to light it it does have electric igniter but it does consume some power because it has an electric display and then also I'm not using the oven right now because it does have an electric element in here uh, yeah right there you can see it this guy it does have a propane line but I was reading through the manual and I think this that maybe brings it up to temp and this will kick on to manage the temperature possibly uh, maybe in combination but uh, I think that might just take too much power so i have not given it a test yet this is just stuff that i've got used and converted and stuff um, i mean you can actually buy propane appliances probably you could get a propane oven that just doesn't have electric element in it and then you wouldn't run into that problem so for the propane lines basically you can go through and add up all of your BTUs for every appliance, get yourself a total, 
and then you can size your lines to make sure that you and your tanks so that you have enough supply say all of those appliances were running at once yeah so we got our wood stove for heat but it would be nice to set up something as a secondary heat source that I could use for when I'm away or if you just don't need to quite run heat but get a little bit of heat. I think electric heat baseboard or something like that or a radiator would be too much but I have been looking into they have in-wall vented propane units which I could possibly just run off a separate 100 pound tank maybe. Yeah so if anybody's running one of those propane in-wall things uh, off-grid, it'd be great to hear some opinions or see if anyone's uh, running that nicely and see kind of how much it consumes and all that. I hope uh, I was able to break things down in detail enough. I hope that helps kind of give an idea of what's possible with solar, what's not. Um, you really just have to figure out all of your devices and appliances and what wattages they use multiply that by how many hours a day you will use each of those. There are calculators online you can find. I'll link one of the solar calculators in the description below. Usually you can just enter in all of the different stuff you have and it'll give you kind of a overall system wattage you need. So how many, you know, size of batteries, size of solar array, all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty helpful. I've learned a lot just by using stuff and honestly like some stuff yeah because it it doesn't run as often as you think and you maybe don't use it as often as you think so it has been a little bit better I would say on the power than I thought originally like even getting this tv I thought I was like there's no way I can have a tv it's gonna consume too much power but you know what it's actually not that bad and you just can you know watch like two to four hours of youtube or something like that and you know you just don't sit there and binge watch netflix for an entire day or something um but uh, you can get by with with that stuff for sure yeah so I had a viewer asking about ac and it looks like a one ton twelve thousand btu heat pump running in cooling mode could consume about 850 watts. Um, if you have a solar array big enough to handle powering that during the heat of the day when they're, they're getting sun, plus whatever else you need for your power. If you really wanna get into the alternative stuff, there are the earth tubes, which you just basically dig big trenches, run, PVC pipe. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below if you have any, and I'll uh, I'll make sure to answer what I can. Hope this helps you if you're into the off-grid journey, trying to disconnect and be more self-reliant. Yeah, and if you're interested in getting any of the products that I've shown in this video, I'll put a link to them in the description below. Yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.